When developing websites and web applications, it's typical to use a web server installed on your computer, accessing the site using the local host web address. One way to separate different projects is to use a separate subfolder for each one, and append the name of this subfolder to the local host URL when accessing the site in a browser. This can cause problems, however, when you move your site to a different server. A URL that works on your local server won't work on the other server if that server doesn't use the same subfolder. In this video, we'll learn how to fix this by creating a virtual host for each project. A virtual host allows each project to have its own web address, its own root folder, and own configuration, all within the same single web server. Let's start with these two projects. This is the root folder of the web server, which contains two subfolders, project one and project two. Project one contains a file called index.php, which just prints out a simple message. Project two contains a file called index.html, which just contains some simple HTML. This is to show that each project can contain whatever you like, PHP, Python, WordPress, or whatever. In the browser, we can access these by going to localhost, then adding the name of the subfolder. Here's project one, and here's project two. To show you what I mean about including the subfolder, Let's add a CSS folder to project two. And in here, a simple style sheet containing a single rule that changes the color of the H1 element to red. In the HTML, let's add a link tag to load this with a root relative path to the style sheet. In the browser, this doesn't work, as the path we just added doesn't include the subfolder. If I add that, and refresh the browser, now it works. However, if we move this to a live server where the code is in the root, we'll have to go through the code and remove all references to this subfolder. Instead, let's create a virtual host for each project so that they're in the root. First, we need to open the main Apache configuration file, httpd.conf. If you're using a package like WAMP or MAMP, then you can access this via the control panel. In this file, towards the end, we need to find the line that loads the virtual host configuration file, which will look something like this. If the line starts with a hash, then it's commented out, so we need to remove this hash and save the file. Then, in that file, we can add the configuration for the virtual host. We'll start with project one. Each virtual host is contained within a virtual host directive. We follow this with an asterisk and then the port. By default, we use port 80, but if you're using a different port for your web server, you would specify it here. The document root directive contains the path to the folder you want as the web root, which in this case is the project one folder. Note that this folder is currently a subfolder of the main web root, but this can be anywhere in your file system. The server name is the address you'll access it with in the browser. If you use an address that ends in .localhost, you don't need any additional configuration for that address, 
as the browser will know it's on your local web server automatically. Otherwise, you'll have to add that address to your hosts file. Pick a simple lowercase name without any punctuation or spaces, and note that this doesn't have to match the folder name, so I'll call mine site1.localhost. Depending on your system, you might also need this additional directory configuration. This path is the same path we specified above. The require all granted line allows the content of this folder to be accessed in a browser, and allow override all enables ht access files in this folder. Whenever we make changes to the web server configuration, we need to restart the web server so the changes are recognized. Let's give that a try. If I go to site1.localhost, the address I specified in the virtual host, there's the content from the project1 folder. Note that now we're in the root of the site and no longer in a subfolder. Let's add a similar virtual host for project 2 by copying this and changing it to the project 2 folder and site2.localhost. And we'll not forget to restart the web server so that these changes are recognized. Before we look at this in the browser, let's change the link to the style sheet so that now it references the style sheet in the root of the web server. Let's have a look at this in the browser. And there's the second project. Now though, the site is in the root. And the style sheet is being loaded relative to the root also. So now, when we move this code between servers, we don't need to make any changes to the code. One additional thing I need to mention, if you're already using localhost for some other projects and you don't want to lose access to that, you might also need to re-enable that by adding the following configuration to the virtual host's configuration file. This path is the default root folder for your web server. So if you're developing a project locally, I recommend using a virtual host instead of a subfolder. This way, you'll avoid having to make changes to paths, redirects, includes, and so on, when you put the code live. All the code shown in this video is linked to in the description. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.